Hey, this is Math 2, Unit 10, Worksheet Number 5, Solving Quadratic Equations Using Square Roots. So one of the key things to remember was when we're using square roots to solve, we're often going to end up with a plus or a minus as, a, as an answer there. So I'm kind of positive or negative. So it'd be like plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, which means there's going to be two solutions usually to these equations, okay? And that's, that makes sense when we talk about things like graphing. If I'm graphing a parabola and looking for intercepts, for example, at an x-intercept, I can have two places where that parabola crosses the x-intercept, which is how you end up with two different answers there, okay? So here we go, solve the equation for x. So here we have x is this, it all equals zero, so we're gonna solve this here. So to solve it, I'm gonna add four to both sides. So I have four equals x plus three, and that's squared. To get rid of the squared, I'm gonna take the square root of both sides, that eliminates that uh, radical there. A square root there and square root of four is going to be plus or minus two and i make that equal to x plus three i want to put the three on the other side so i'm going to subtract three now here's what's key i have to keep that group together and i'm going to write minus three plus or minus two equals x all right so let me write this right kind of big right here larger so negative three minus three plus or minus two equals x. So now I really have kind of two math problems, okay? What are my two math problems? I have negative three plus two, and I have negative three minus two are both gonna be equal to x. Negative three plus two is equal to negative one, and negative three minus two is negative five. So what does x equal? x is equal to negative one and it's equal to negative five. It's equal to both of those things. That's not a coordinate, this is the saying it's equal to two things. Negative one and negative five are both values of x when what? When I have it set to zero. Notice that zero is the same thing as y, okay? So when I graph this function right here, what happens is this. We say, well, what is my vertex? My vertex is gonna be at negative three, comma, negative four. So let's plot this over here, one, two, three, and then down one, two, three, four. That's my vertex at negative three, comma, negative four. That's my first thing I know based upon that um, equation right there. Then, again, it's positive, right? So that tells me it's positive, it's gonna be curving up this direction. Well, if I curve anything up this direction, what do you notice when I curve there? I'm gonna cross the x-axis two times, aren't I? So where am I gonna cross the x-axis at? Well, I'm gonna cross that at when y equals zero. Okay, so when y equals zero, I'm gonna have x is gonna be at negative one and negative five. So one, two, three, four, five. So now when I graph this out there, like so, I end up with something along those lines like that, okay? So where do I see the answers from part A in my graph? I see them where they are on the x-intercept. So when I set that equal to zero, that's gonna show me where my x-intercept is gonna be at. And then I can find the vertex in the vertex form, and I'm okay there. All right, so it's kinda cool to show how an equation can be solved, and when you solve the equation, that tells you your x-intercepts. And because we're doing with square roots, we end up with two, so that's why I have two numbers there, which works out to being two equations. Let's look at number three together. Same idea, let's solve for the equation and then we'll graph it and see what we notice. So we're gonna go ahead and subtract eight from both sides, so subtract eight from here. So I'm gonna put negative eight equals negative two times x minus three squared. I'm gonna divide both sides by negative two, divide by negative two. So negative eight divided by negative two is a positive four. So positive four equals x minus three squared. We take the square root of both sides. Square root of four is what, moving up here, is plus or minus two. Plus or minus two equals x minus three. We're gonna get the three on that side, so we add three, so we have what? Three plus or minus two equals x. So now I have two problems. I'm gonna split this apart, right? I have three plus two, and I have three minus two. Three plus two is five, and three minus two is one, okay? So there's my, my equation so far. All right, 
So what do we know about this? We know that we have, for the function here, it's negative, which tells us we're gonna be curving down that way. We have a vertex at three comma eight. That's my vertex there. So I could plot it out, one, two, three, and go up eight, three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I plot a vertex right there. And then based upon this, if I look at my x values, where will my x-intercept be? It's going to be at 1 and 5. So I'm going to have an x-intercept at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there we are. And what's kind of cool is if you notice here, I'll get my marker out. If I looked at my axis of symmetry, right, going down that little line there, notice that if that's my vertex, right, these are our two units away, which tells me that, that my work was correct. <laughs> that actually, the axis of symmetry cuts that, those two points like actually in half. It's the midpoint between those there. So if I graph this here, I end up with something along these lines. Okay, and that's what I have. So where do I see the answers from here in the graph? Again, that is at the x-intercept is where you see that taking place there. And that'd be the same kind of idea for numbers two and four. And then five wants you to, to just in your own words, explain what's happening there. You write down, what do you see happening and what's taking place? Looking at the next backside here, let's solve some equations. And so we're gonna do some solutions here for some equations and I'm gonna do some odd ones. So here we go. Make sure I'm on the screen. There we go. All right, so let's solve here. We're gonna add 27 to both sides. So this becomes 27 equals 3x squared. Let's divide both sides by 3. 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 equals x squared. And take the square root of both sides. The square root of 9 is plus or minus 3 equals x. So x is equal to plus or minus 3. And how many intercepts are going to be? There are going to be two intercepts. And that's what we do for number 7. Looking at number 9. We're gonna add six to this side, so we end up with six equals 11x squared. I'm gonna divide both sides by 11, so I have six over 11 equals x squared. And so now it gets a little tricky. I take the square root of both sides, right, to find the value of x. So let's take a look at what happens at this. This is where we have to kind of go back to a previous unit, okay? It never goes away. So the square root of, of six over 11 is this. It's square root of six over square root of 11. I can't have a radical on the bottom, so I'm gonna do a square root of 11, square root of 11, I'm gonna multiply, this is like one, right? Anything over itself is one. When I do square root of 11 times square root of 11, on the bottom that leaves me with just 11, but on the top I have to, I can multiply what's on the inside to have the square root of 66. I can't reduce that anymore because there's no square numbers in there. So the square root of 6 elevenths is actually root 66 over 11. But remember, this is gonna be plus or minus the square root of 66 over 11. So I could have a positive one or a negative uh, root 66 over 11. So again, there are gonna be, in this case here, two intercepts because it's plus minus. So I do have to go back and work with the radicals to clean that up. So don't just leave it as plus or minus um, radical or root six, six eleven. So clean that up a little bit. Number 11, same idea. Okay. I'm going to have a negative 100 equals, um, five X squared divide both sides by five. I have a negative 20 equals X squared. Now I want to get the radical uh, the square to go away. So I do square root. Can you do right? That that's fine. That's X is there a square root of a negative number no it's not possible okay it doesn't exist you can't do it nope none so we're gonna say there's none so what does this mean that means in this case here there is not an x-intercept there is no x-intercept in that equation that's what that means okay and if you think about it is that possible sure it is if you were to graph something you could have something again look at this that's our our vertex, if we look about this, our y-intercept is at 100. That means we have a square thing that goes like this, crosses y at 100, and it never hits the x-axis. So it's very, very possible. Looking at number 13, 
number 13, we're gonna solve this here. So we're gonna add 21 over here. So we have 21 equals x minus seven squared. I take the square root of this side, the square root of this side. So I have square root of 20, 21. So this is gonna be plus or minus root 21 equals x minus seven. I'm gonna add seven over here. So I have seven plus or minus root 21 equals x. Do I know what that means? Nope, I just know that's my solution. And it tells me that I have, again, two intercepts. Number 15, same idea. I'm gonna have negative 12 over here by subtracting equals x plus one squared. Take the square root, take the square root. Can I take the square root of a negative number? No, I cannot. So there are no x-intercepts. None exist for that one. And then finally over here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna subtract 20. So this becomes negative four is x plus seven squared. I can divide by negative four, divide by negative four. So x plus seven squared equals negative 20 divided by negative four is a positive five. So don't get all quick and think, oh, negative, it's done. Nope, it becomes positive. Do the square root of both sides. So you have x plus seven equals the square root plus or minus square root of five. And then we'll subtract seven. So x is gonna be equal to negative seven plus or minus square root of five. We always put that whole number in front of the radical. That's just kind of the typical way of writing that out. So again, how many solutions are there gonna be? There are gonna be two solutions for that problem right there. Okay, looking at <laughs> one of these word problems, we'll look at number 19. <coughs> okay, the basketball's thrown upward at the initial speed of 64 feet per second. Height is given by this equation right there. How many seconds will it hit the ground? Okay, so and think of it this way. It's gonna start here. We know it's negative, so it's gonna go up and down and come back down. So assuming that we're gonna have a place where it reflects over, we could take and find, look at the vertex. The vertex is where? The vertex is at two comma 64. This is gonna be two seconds right there. So if that's two seconds, it's gonna take from zero to one to two to get there. And that means it's gonna take three to four to hit the ground. So we're going to double the x value of the vertex. So two times two tells me four seconds. All right, and you can do something similar to these other problems, numbers 18 and 20. Look back at your notes from the last lesson if you get stuck. That's it, have a great day, see you next time.